I'm trying to remember how to stream on YouTube at the same time. It's been a while since I've had to remember how to do all this stuff. We need to unplug that because I'm getting an echo on my end. All right, so welcome everybody. Uh, we've got a good number of folks in, uh, five of our six CAP members online right now. So let's get started with our June 28th special full board meeting. Welcome everybody and thank you for attending. Uh, notice that we have a uh, few, lot fewer board members than we normally would have, and a number of other people are planning to address that today, so I'm not going to belabor the point. And that, what I'll do is I'll just go over the agenda real briefly. It's a short one. We've got a few brief updates from Greg and then a couple from Amy, who's going to address a couple of things. And then we're going to get into the purpose of our meeting today, and that is recommendation discussion. A uh, draft recommendation was put forward by Greg. We're going to discuss that wordsmith it, get it fine, nice and polished, and I'll read a few public comments that we've received about that draft, and then we'll move into a vote if the board is so inclined. Any questions about the agenda? Seeing none. Greg, I'm going to hand it over to you as the chair of the board to get us started today. All righty. Thank you so much, James. And I want to take, I'm going to take a few minutes here. I want to thank everybody for making yourselves available for this special meeting of the CAB today, and thanks to the CAB administrative staff and DOE for providing the, re the time and resources we need to conduct this special meeting. I will note that I very much miss our 19 or so CAB colleagues who would normally be at a full board meeting with us, but can't because DOE headquarters did not approve their membership applications after nearly 10 months. I also note, regrettably, that they will not be with us for the remainder of the CAB's work this year as DOH, DOE HQ has decided in the last few weeks to reject all of our CAB applicants for this coming year. I'm told that DOE values community input, but evidently not the input of these volunteers who freely offer a considerable amount of time to sort through a great deal of technical information and otherwise participate on the CAB. But more about that later when we take up the draft recommendations scheduled for today. But first I wanna take a few minutes to update everyone on CAB activities that occurred over this last several months. As you recall, we had our last full CAB meeting in January. In February, we met to create our work plan for 2021. Shortly after that, we were informed that the approval of our membership application package was being delayed uh, for an indefinite period of time, and we informally suspended our activities. It, seemed hard, it hardly seemed right for six to seven people to pretend to represent the full 25 member board. In April, Jim Gill and I attended the National Chairs meeting. We did this as the acting chair and vice chair of the CAB, since our chair's application was actually rejected along with all the others. Thanks, Jim, for agreeing to step into that role and participating in that two afternoon meeting. Then, as you know, DOE HQ formally rejected our membership package earlier this month. And that brings us to our special meeting today. Now, next, I want to take a, a minute and give a quick overview. Actually, might be a little bit more than a minute. We give a quick review of what happened at the chair's meeting in April. It's formally called the Environmental Management Site-Specific Advisory Board meeting. We held it April 20th to 21st virtually. Now, for those of, those of you who haven't had a chance to participate or, or see those things, it's all the advisory boards were represented as well as a number of people from DOE headquarters. We had presentations by the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for EM, by the chairs in a round robin format, an update from uh, Ian, from an Ian advisory board member. And this is somebody, this is the board that, rec that makes recommendations to um, Ike White. An EM regulatory and policy affairs update, a budget update for EM, a risk communications presentation. And that was all on day one. And then on day two, we had a discussion of the char of charges one and two that the board dealt with um, earlier in the year and late last year. So for the um, presentation by the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for EM, Todd Schrader, he noted his appreciation for the CABs. He also said the department rain, remains on maximum telework for employees that are not conducting mission essential work for on-site activities. Mr. Schrader noted that the new administration has shown very strong support for the EM mission, which is good news. Much of the focus of the department is on the administration's priority of clean energy Although Secretary, Secretary Granholm often mentions the importance of the EM mission during national interviews she does with the media. He also commented that EM has received strong support for Congre from Congress 
on its budget. Further, he commented on the recently released EM strategic vision 2021 to 2031. It outlines um, goals and such for the next 10 years. And then he also commented on the EM calendar year 2021 priority list, which for SRS includes processing 6 million gallons of tank waste. Then we had a presentation by Mark Gilbertson, who is the Associate Principal De Deputy Assistant Secretary for EM Regulatory and Policy Affairs. He elaborated on the program's top five priorities, which are achieve significant construction project milestones, execute key projects that enable the EM cleanup mission, reduce the EM complex foot footprint, award contracts that enable accelerated progress, and drive innovation and improve performance. He also talked about some of the objectives included in the EM strategic vision for 2020, uh, 2021 to 2031, and these were things like activities to maintain a safe, secure, compliant posture for workforce, uh, radioactive tank waste, stabilization treatment and disposal, spent nuclear fuel and nuclear materials management and disposition, transuranic and mixed low-level waste uh, disposition, soil and groundwater remediation, and excess facilities deactivation and decommissioning. Then we had a, a presentation by Steve Trishman, the Director of Budget and Planning for, for EM. He noted that EM's FY 2021 enacted budget is $7.6 billion. And just to give you some idea of how this is allocated, about 37% of it goes to radioactive tank waste, 20% to facility deactivation and decommissioning, 15% to site services, 14% to true and solid waste, 8% spent nuclear materials and spent nuclear fuel, and 6% soil and groundwater. Uh, he also noted in one slide that, of course, ESRS receives about 1.7 billion of the 7.6 billion in the enacted budget for 2021. That's just, so you know, that's about 22% of that amount. He said that the FY 2022 budget is in the formulation stage and there are currently no significant opportunities for input, but that the 2023 um, budget, uh, some sites have had meetings with stakeholder groups and there are op opportunities for input until September 21, uh, until this September, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to be talking about the budget in uh, in the July meeting, so that might be an opportunity um, for us. So um, that was the first day of the meeting. And the second day, we talked about the um, charges that, to the DOE uh, advisory boards and that we dealt with. And as you recall, Charge one collected information from the advisory boards about best practices for community outreach. The boards mentioned, like we did, a number of activities, including social media, newsletters, press releases, those sort of things. Things. It seems though that the activity mentioned the most is site tours. In the end, they formed a committee to prepare a report on results of charge one. And they noted that CAB members from any advisory board are invited to participate if you'd like to participate. Uh, and one of those things that I guess the plan would be to let James know. Charge two is one of those ones that was sort of a moving target and evolved over time, sort of as they mentioned in the presentation. It mostly ended up focusing on how the advisory boards will inter interact with their communities and stakeholders uh, to reach the 2021-2031 EM vision. It seemed to me that a lot of this discussion was about generalizing the practices discussed in charge one. And again, though, they're going to put together, they have put together a committee to prepare a report regarding charge two and invited members from um, any of the advisory boards to participate. If you'd like to participate again, I guess the way to go on that is to let James know. Um, I wanted to, Jim was also at that meeting. Jim, did you want to, did you want to uh, add anything to any of that? Uh, yeah, I um, have a little different perspective, uh, having been the first time uh, being exposed to all of the different uh, facilities and listening to their uh, issues and progress. Um, it's amazing the diversity of technical challenges that EM deals with. And at the same time, there are, I think, some common themes that run through the various operations. For example, recruiting people to the board, uh, getting the outreach to be effective. These are things that all of us seem to be struggling to some degree with. Uh, and that really kind of gave a, a good framework um, to continue to see what we can do to expand 
uh, in those areas and hopefully get some of the best practices. So that was kind of my observation. Um, Greg, you certainly covered all of the details and all of the summaries. Um, and anybody who is interested, uh, James, I assume that we have made available the minutes or the draft minutes uh, from the uh, chair's meeting that people could look at. No, I didn't send the, the draft minutes out to everybody, just to you and Greg to make sure that you had a chance to review it and ask any questions about the content before it got up the final approval and pushed out. Okay, once the final approval's in, then then it's available. Sure. Okay, super. All right. That's that's my comment. Thank you. Great, Jim. Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that. And I agree. I'm hoping hopefully we can make sure that those minutes are made available to um our members. So other than that, um, let's see, I, that con that concludes my comments. And I again, I appreciate everybody for being here today and, and going through this. I know uh, some several people made special efforts to do it, and I appreciate appreciate it. And with that, I will conclude my comments and turn it back to James. I'll also note that in addition to sending them out, they're available on the main EMSSAB website as well, those meeting minutes. So if you ever want to check any of the others out or see the work that the advisory board has done, you can check it out through that avenue. Uh, moving on down the agenda, our DDFO update from Amy Boya. Amy? All right, thank you, James, and good afternoon, everyone. I do just want to provide an update on the membership and the plans that DOESR has for the remainder of calendar year, for the remainder of 2021 for the CAB. So as most of you know, uh, on June 10th, we did get news from DOE headquarters that the 2021 SRS CAB membership package, which we'd submitted, as Greg said, back in August of 2020, had been rejected outright because it did not include enough women applicants. Recruiting women and minorities has long been a priority for us, and we do continue to look for innovative ways to reach a more diverse population and encourage them to apply. We have already received several applications to serve on the 2022 CAB, and we are confident that we'll be able to increase and improve the board's diversity going forward. However, in light of that news, given that we were already halfway through the year, and we're nearing the August deadline to submit our package for 2022, DOESR decided that rather than resubmit a package for this year, we would conduct the remaining meetings for the year with the current membership and that we would submit a new membership package for 2022. I do wanna stress that we have given all of the members who were in the 2021 package the option of whether or not they wish to be included in 2022. We recognize that being in limbo for nearly a year may have caused some people to rethink their willingness to serve on the board, and we certainly would understand that. But I am pleased to say that so far, we've heard back from almost everyone, and all but one has opted to renew their application for 2022. So that's good news. And we will include all those who still want to be renewed. We are not removing anyone who still wants to serve on the cab. I just want to stress that point. Um, as I've already mentioned, DOESR does intend to continue all the scheduled cab meetings for the remainder of 2021. This one and of uh, the one on July 26, we are planning to be virtual but we want to return to in-person meetings uh, for the remaining meetings. So those scheduled September 20th and 21st, um, we intend to be in-person meetings. And our full schedule, of course, is available to, to everyone on the website. And while we, we were a bit hesitant at first to go forward with only six board members, the reality is that we thought this was gonna be a temporary setback but instead it turned into a long-term condition. The six of you are the cab, uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say stop to say thank you to all of you um, for your continued service, and especially uh, Greg and Jim, as you represented the SRS cab so well at the, at the chair's meeting, as you were mentioning. Um, I and the rest of the DOE SR management team do believe in stakeholder involvement 
We do not want to wait on reappointments that couldn't happen until late January. So we're asking that you do continue the work of the board. We appreciate your willingness to do it in spite of the circumstances. Uh, we are working on the 2022 membership package now, and we need and hope to include each one of you in that renewal process as well. So with that, I, I'll say that I am happy like you, Greg, to be back in a CAB meeting, even if it is virtual and even if it is with um, with fewer members. But uh, I feel good about about getting back to getting back to work with all of you. So that concludes my remarks, and I'd be happy to take any questions that you guys have. Any questions from the board members for Amy? I'll, I'll ask, let me ask something real quick, just to get the information out there. How much longer are we going to accept applications for? What's the deadline for applications for those of us who might know people who might be interested? That's one of the things that we had been discussing internally. We want to we want to cut it off soon because we want to finish the package and get things up to headquarters. But we are thinking mid July and I'm going to look to Delisa to nod her head. I think we said maybe July 15th. Is that what we agreed to? Yeah, we um, July 15th will be a good time that uh, because we're still um, I've been getting other folks that are still kind of putting the word out. So mid July, July 15th, it would be a good number. Um, let's see, July 15th, yes, yeah, uh, midweek, so. Okay, July 15th. Can y'all tell us just real quickly, because I know that there is a process that you all go through to um, review the applications. Can you give us just a brief, real brief overview of sort of what you do so people know? Delisa, do you want to, I know we do the right. interviews. Right, you mean like say, well, we, once we recruit for the information applications then we get those and then we go through them and we actually conduct uh, phone interviews with those folks. And then, um, and then we, um, James has this wonderful little matrix where it makes it all real easy for me for just to, you know, insert all the information um, you know, about the folks. And um, of course, when I say that I'm speaking um, of their the diversity and you know their um, male female you know the locations they're from and uh, once we do that there's um, headquarters has provided us a template with um, all kinds of uh, well about four or five different um, pieces that we kind of plug the members in and uh, <clears throat> then of course along with that goes their biographies and uh, interest and um, and then once we get that which is it's a pretty defined uh, package. And uh, so once we get that together, then it does go back to, you know, after it's approved by our co-DDFOs and um, Mike Budney and Thomas Johnson as our um, um, site managers and deputy manager, then we do get to forward it to uh, headquarters. And that's where that's where that review process begins. Yeah, I know. I, I know it's for even it's no small task. Even just getting people on the phone for the interviews can be a problem. So this is not an easy task you all uh, complete for the cab. So I thank you all for that. Any other questions for Amy? Hey James, this is DeAndre. Hey DeAndre. Doing well. Um, just had one quick question, Ms. Amy, did you receive my application? Because I'm not for sure if uh, it was submitted um, due to the nature of how things had transpired with uh, the pandemic. Uh, I want to be able to get a full understanding um, of what the board's responsibility is and how we are uh, so inclined to uh, be a support to SRS. So I would love to serve again so that uh, I will get a full understanding. So but I'll be able to share that with the community uh, as we're moving forward uh, in this season. Yes, thank you. I'm seeing uh, James and Delisa nodding their heads. So <laughs> I will say yes. We got you, DeAndre. Okay. And I thank agree. You. I mean, you and Phyllis both, I mean, you kind of got shortchanged on your first term here. We want to make sure that we can get back in and get get you both uh, up to speed across the board on everything. And for everybody else that we have, 
the other members who are, what I'll put quotation marks, more experienced, they haven't met together in person since November 2019. That's a long time to sit and, and wait and a lot of things I'm sure that's been forgotten. I imagine our first in-person meeting is going to be a lot of 101 type stuff to get us all back on track. A lot of it. Any other questions for Amy? Seeing none. Let's move into the next phase of our meeting here. Why don't we? Uh, let's go into the draft recommendation discussion. Now, everybody should have a copy of it. I believe I've sent it out. Uh, if you'd like, I can share my screen and we can pull it up. If that works for you, Greg. All right, I'll do that. And then if you want to go ahead and start introducing this, talk a little bit about, you know, I'll say what it is that you're wanting to accomplish and the basic aims of this thing. All righty. So thank you, James. Thank you for everybody, um, your attention to this. We, I mean, we've talked quite a bit in, you know, just now and previously about sort of this appointment process and how it got us to this position where we've got six members on a 25 member cab. Uh, and you can read more details about that, um, or at least the, the thoughts behind it uh, in the in the background of the recommendation itself. But the idea of the recommendation <clears throat> was to revise the uh, appointment process, the membership appointment process, to hope in a way that will hopefully prevent us from finding ourselves in this position again. Uh, and with that in mind, it makes a recommendation to do in essence, three things. So first, just make a general statement that the, you know, that all that reasonable efforts will be made uh, to make sure that, you know, we don't have a bunch of labs lapsed. And I'm and I know there's a question about that term, but we don't have a bunch of lapsed memberships, uh, and meaning that we end up with just a handful of members. So one, just making a general statement about that. Two, setting up or offering a process for avoiding that. And basically what that process would entail would be allowing uh, DOE SRS to appoint members temporarily until those permanent applications uh, can be processed. And finally, the third point was about, uh, I, I don't want to, I, it's about being transparent about the process, but I don't necessarily want to suggest that they're not they're not transparent about the process, but in other, but but primarily it's just let's lay the process out so people can see exactly what it entails and what's done, and um, then people, the public, including the the advisory board members, whether it's us or any place else, uh, can have some input in terms of how that process uh, goes forward. So that's the that is the basis of, or those are the major points of the recommendation. That's my summer. All right. Thanks, Greg. Does anyone have any questions for Greg? I want to we definitely want to start with the board members. Uh, feel free to throw your hand up, but I can't see everybody right now because that's free and sharing. So if you want to just shout out, because there's only six of us and I'm sure that we can manage. James, this is Jim Geel. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, I agree entirely with what Greg has um, developed here. And I think there is a desperate need for a formalized process that will not allow board membership to get into the state it's in today. Uh, having said that, um, I have a couple of edits to uh, present, one of which it deals with the definition of what a lapsed membership is. Um, I'm concerned that I'm that concerned term with... can become any sort of thing. Uh, I think the intent here, and Greg, you can confirm this, is that a lapsed membership is from a board member in good standing whose term has expired. And that would serve as the definition that can be tacked on to the tail end of recommendation number one. So having put that out there, love to hear some comments. From my perspective, this is Greg, from my perspective, yes, Jim, that's exactly what we're talking about or I had in mind. Uh, with the term lapsed membership. And I think it would make sense just to maybe add the sentence something that 
that says, you know, a lapsed, a lapsed membership is defined as, and then as you put it. That would make sense to me as one way to address that. I think that can be done. Can you get, did you get it, James? Or whoever no, talking? not at all. <laughs> okay. okay. Jim, can you re-say your uh, definition of what a lapsed member is or membership? Okay, a lapsed membership, um, get out of the way there, uh, is going to be defined as a membership held by a cab member in good standing whose term has expired. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Okay with that. I tacked on a little extra. All right. Yeah, that that should be enough to keep resignations out of this because you need you need to put in something to prevent resignation resigned members being um reappointed. I understand. Did you have any other Items, John. The only other thing I had was in the uh, background section. In the uh, second paragraph, um, we talk about, I think it's about the third sentence where we say to this point, 8 months after it was submitted, the SRS cab membership, et cetera, et cetera. I would actually strike that whole uh, sentence. I don't think it adds any value. Uh, I think the purpose of getting. Um, headquarters attention uh, is served by the, the rest of it and that sentence is trying to predict the future because what it says today doesn't isn't true anymore. So that can continue on. I'd rather get that out of there and I still think we get the intent of the paragraph. Greg, you're the author, so I'm going to defer to you. Do you want to start? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just trying to just make sure it's clear that they still have not approved it. Let's see. Um, should we do, Jim, what about if it just said to this point, the cab membership package has not been approved? Is it the month, the time that you don't like, or is it, I think we need to be clear that it hasn't been approved. What about this? How do you feel about this edit? Uh, the last sentence says it's still unapproved. So we cover it in the very okay. last sentence. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Take it out. Gone. All right. Any others? Hey, James, this is Mike. Uh, if we go back down to the uh, where we were talking about the definition of a lapsed member, and I may display some ignorance of the cab rules here. Um, but I, do we need to quantify the time period we're talking about there? Because what if a member's uh, term lapsed two years ago, uh, but they hadn't reached the six limit? The, the way the next paragraph reads is that we would, uh, uh, all those lapsed members would temporarily retain their seats, even though perhaps it lapsed a couple years ago. Are we talking about, you know, within the last year when they lapsed, within the last two years, or or is it um, to prevent membership from falling below 75%? The site manager has the authority to uh, extend the the, the uh, term of of uh, board members. So we'd actually be proactive, and we we made sure we stayed seventy five percent above as as members came up on the end of the tour. I, I just need to think about the mechanics here because I I don't quite see how we do the way it's no, that, right that's there. that's an interesting point because members who haven't completed their full six years are technically eligible to be reappointed but you, you're not wanting to reach backwards in this it, in the case that we're in now you wouldn't want to reach backwards five years to someone that didn't finish and bring them up now you know you're trying to keep people on the bench today they want to be on the bench uh, it may be simpler just to say the site manager has the authority to extend current cap members beyond their uh, uh, to extend their membership in order to prevent the membership from falling below 75%. 
until a new package is approved or something. Something in here, something. Mike, that's a great point. Do you want to even put a finer point on it and say um, a cab member in good standing whose term has expired, say, in the last calendar year or something like that? To, or you could say recently, but then that opens the door to what recently means. Who has recently but, expired? Yeah, I like that last calendar, within the calendar year. Um, of course, that presupposes that headquarters will actually get our package approved. <laughs> so, it hasn't been a full 12 months yet, so we're, we'd still be in the clear. <laughs> all, right, all right. Oh, gosh. Oh, my. Okay, so uh, it, it, any other questions, comments, concerns about this? Especially from the board, I'm curious to hear from everybody. James, this is Charles. Hey, Charles. Uh, just wanted to say that I strongly support this. Greg, thank you for writing this and doing this. Greg, in your initial comments, you made the comment that SRS DOE wants the participation of the Citizens Advisory Board. But at the same time, I take things too literally. Sometimes actions speak louder than words. James has already mentioned we haven't met since November of 19, I believe. I don't like Zoom meetings. Uh, I understand the necessity for this. This process has gone on way too long. And it sends a huge message to me. You know, I've tried to do what I was supposed to do as a member of this board in fully participating, sometimes ex expressing my comments when they probably were not appreciated. But I have been very open in, in both criticisms and accolades to SRS and DOE for what's going on down there. But the message that I've gotten out of the last six months, you know, Packages not being approved. Uh, this is what I call dragging our feet, or either they don't really want our input. And so, again, Greg, I fully support this this recommendation. I will be voting to su fully support it. Thank you for writing it, because I would probably have not been so diplomatic had I written this thing. So thank you. Just my words of appreciation to you and my support for what's been done. Thank you, Charles. Thanks, Charles. <clears throat> Any other thoughts? Folks? This is Candace Page. Hi, Candace. Um, can you go back to the paragraph um, where it says SRS, the cab was led to believe by the OE? Oh, right here. Yes. I don't know. I was, um, when I read it, it just, I don't know, led to believe it just kind of fell off to me. Um, but again, I do support this uh, recommendation. I think it's very needed and it has been a very frustrating time as a new board member. But um, yeah, I, something about the led to believe the business at well with me. I can I can see that. Greg, how do you feel about it? How do you feel that led to believe section? Uh, what would the alternative wording be? We're told. I don't know. Are you saying it's too harsh or is it not harsh enough? Um, I feel like it's too harsh and a little bit accusatory. Um, yeah, it's, it's borderlines um, unprofessional. In 
So maybe would you feel a bit better if it were softened from led to believe to the SRS cap has been told? Absolutely. How do you feel about that, Greg? That's fine. Any other thoughts? Thank you, Candace. Yes, thank you. All right, folks. I'm gonna give it one more pass around the room from the board members. Any questions, comments, thoughts about this that you wanna express? All right. Let me stop sharing for a bit and let's move this back on to the full screen so I can see everybody. Um, the next thing up on the agenda, if there's not any questions or comments, and please feel free to stop me if so, would be the reading of public comments. Does anybody have anything that you want to get off your chest before we move into that? All right. Well, we did receive some public comments for this particular recommendation. Uh, it's not often that we always get that, but I was glad to see some. This is wonderful. Ruth Hollingsworth, a board member that you may be familiar with, or former board member at this stage, did send in this that she expressed support for proposal to revise the member appointment process for the SRSs and advisory board. The delay by the DOE in renewing board members has left the board with no quorum. The proposal will remedy this until DOE is able to approve previous and new memberships. The SRS CAB is vital to the mission of the DOE environmental management at both the nation and local levels. Uh, I do want to take a moment and just kind of define quorum because it is a little bit different the way that we work it. Some boards look at quorum as their totality of possible memberships. We look at it from the perspective of members that we have. So our quorum is based off of six people right now, and it's 50 plus 1%. So if I've got four of you in the room, then you can make decisions for, for everybody. Uh, so I just wanna make sure that we do understand what our what our actual definite working definition of quorum is and how it may deviate from some of the standard definitions that you see out in the community or relayed in these comments. Another one from uh, Ruth's husband, David Hollingsworth, the SRS CAB is making a recommendation to allow all current members to be approved as voting members due to a DOE delay in reappointments, and it should be approved. This will allow a quorum for going forward for discussions, proposals. The CAB is an important component of the SRS facility, performing reviews, providing recommendations to the facility. A full board membership should be approved. Uh, another comment, this one from Carl Steen, another former member. Uh, hoping to be reappointed for 2022. I have reviewed and support this draft recommendation, short, sweet, and to the point, I like it. And then lastly, another one from a former member hoping to be reappointed in 2022. This one's from Narendra Malik. I'm writing to express my support for the draft recommendation submitted by Dr. Greg Murray. I think this recommendation should be given an expeditious process for approval and submitting to DOE. Following his explanation for my support of this draft recommendation, it has been disappointing to know that DOE has not renewed and or brought the board members of the CAB to full strength. This decision by DOE headquarters leaves a big gap in the board strength and joint brainstorming. This appears that DOE has not recognized, the, recognized that limiting the CAB board members to seven, now six, from 25 is like brain drain. Board members from diversified areas had been significantly contributing and giving their citizens input for the performance of DOE and maintaining community relations. It had been very impressive that board members had been successfully submitting recommendations for improving the remediation and improving the environment at SRS. Active board members had been submitting recommendations during the pandemic period. That is a kudo to board members. This was evidence of their fiduciary duty and contributing on behalf of citizens of the area. Board members demonstrated their willingness for continuing mission improvement and safety of neighboring communities. As a citizen of the CSRA area, I earnestly hope that DOE headquarters will bring the CAB board to full strength soon for continuous community relationship and citizen input for safely operating the SRS facility. Lastly, I would like to reiterate that work done by CAB board members and their contributions have been significant and very valuable. Once again, it is my request to DOE headquarters to bring CAB board members to 
strength to full thank you. The public comment period will be open for another week after this meeting and all comments received will be attached to the meeting minutes and posted on the board website. All right, any other questions, comments or concerns from the board before we move to the next phase of our meeting today? Do you ever think that we were going to get this far in a full board meeting in 40 minutes? This is wild. I know it's part of the, just the agenda, but man, we are fine. Um, up next on our agenda is voting. Greg, I'm going to ask you to lead that portion of it and I'll keep track of our votes for the day. Uh, when you say, thank you, James. When you say lead that, what would you like well, to do? You, I mean, ask for a, ask for a motion and then I'll call, I'll, we'll do a roll call vote like we did in the past. Okay, may I have a motion to adopt this, our draft recommendation today regarding revising the member appointment process as we just discussed? So moved. This is Charles, so moved. All right. Do so we have enough motions? <laughs> yeah, between everybody, I feel like there's a motion in a second definitely in there. All right. Amy, can you nod your head? Are we legal? Do we have to get a legit second? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I would say that Charles um, made the motion and it sounded like Jim seconded it. Yep. All right. So I'm going to call board members' names one by one. I'm going to ask you to give me a yay, nay, or abstain as we go through. So, Phyllis, I'm going to start with you. We're going to go in alphabetical order. It'll be Phyllis and then Candace. Phyllis? How about this? Yes, yeah. finally. Yeah. I couldn't get it to unmute. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Yay. I'm glad. I'm glad. Candace and then DeAndre. Candace? Candace? Yay. DeAndre and then Jim? Yay. Yay. Jim and then Charles. Jim? Yay. All right. Charles and then Greg? Charles? All right. Yeah. Greg, you get the last vote. All right, that's 100%. That is a unanimous yay vote. This is your brand new recommendation. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you for your work. Uh, before we start our closeout process, are there any comments from the board? Sure. A few things that you wanted to say to everybody. Hey, yeah, thanks, Jim. I just, I just want to say thanks for sticking us with for this through this process. Uh, all of you who are on the board right now, uh, you know, throughout my career, I've always uh, I've had a, a number of disappointments. But the question is, what do you do next? And uh, I think your recommendation, so that we can ensure continuity in case of unforeseen circumstances, uh, is appropriate. And uh, on our end, Amy's team uh, has taken a hard look at how we do our recruiting and prep our packages. And working very hard to make sure that when uh, we submit a package for the board uh, membership, that uh, what we want to do is represent the entire community across the entire spectrum of uh, locations and people and everybody. So we've taken a hard look at how we're doing that, uh, uh, done some different recruiting than we have in the past, and are going to try to, to uh, make this work uh, even better. I, I really don't think we're going to have a problem getting another package through. Uh, based on the efforts that they've all put in. Uh, so uh, I look forward to getting that done here in the next couple of months and, and then uh, we'll get right back to the uh, the normal uh, activities. Uh, I also appreciate you all input on uh, FY23 uh, budget process. Uh, we've got input from a lot of different uh, stakeholders and community and that's, uh, that is very valuable to make sure that we're aligned with the priorities that uh, the community wants and all our stakeholders want. So thanks again for all your help. Uh, and, and making this a useful process. Thank you. Uh, Greg, you want to close it out for us? Sure. James, real quick though, can you give us, can you, our next meeting is going to be, I believe you told me on July 26th. Is that right? Yes, July 26th yeah. at 1 p.m. That one will be uh, using the CAB team accounts. Okay, very good. And then um, I wanted to say, Charles, we're all with you. We want to we want to get back and see everybody uh, in person as we can, but as we can do it safely. And it's my understanding that our meeting following 
the July meeting will be in person, and I'm assuming the rest of them following that will be in person. Uh, so I think that's I think that's good news for all of us. So that said, thank you all for your attendance at this special meeting. Again, I know people made special efforts to do this, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for support of this recommendation. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, this will help and give some ideas on maybe some ways that this process can be uh, improved and everybody will be the better for it. And finally, you know, thank you to all the members for your service to the cab and, you know, the community too. Uh, that's important service and um, uh, it is appreciated. And finally, thank you to, uh, thank you cab and DOE administrative staffs for the help you provide us. It's, it's not gratuitous to say we couldn't do it without you. So that said, I will see everybody on the 26th and thank you again. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon.